It's a Mad World Charlie Brown is the darkest Peanuts animation parody I've ever seen, and I'm surprised it is less commonly discussed than other animation parodies relating to Peanuts. This one, however, is a whole different story. But regardless, is it worth checking out? Let's get into it. No one could ever love you, Charlie Brown. Not with that frown and that round head of yours. Ha <laughs> ha! Many Peanuts parodies exist, ranging from unconventional to outright bizarre, with examples found in shows like Robot Chicken and Family Guy. This is not just from official properties, there are also a variety of fan parody animations. Most are not on par with something as innocent as the original Peanuts. Hell, I reviewed a batshit parody from a college project a long time ago. However, It's a Mad World Charlie Brown stands out for its faithful visual representation of the Peanuts characters while taking a notably dark and disturbing turn. Yeah, this was one I watched on YouTube a long time ago, around the same time I watched Bring Me Ahead of Charlie Brown. Again, I was looking around for anything Peanuts related, and let me tell ya, oh boy, this was something alright. Originally uploaded by Next View Designs on YouTube, the creators' whereabouts remain a mystery as their channel has been deactivated and any attempts to reach out via email, social media, or Patreon have been fruitless. Although their Newgrounds account is still accessible, the most recent activity dates back to May of 2017. And their animation catalog is sparse, as the only project besides the Peanuts ones is a 2010 Flash animation called Pico and Friends. Oh, and Tony D is the creator behind the account, so if Tony happens to be watching this, please contact me. i love to learn more about what inspired this Peanuts project. Before we move on, I want to clarify that there are two versions of the animated parody, the 2011 Flash version and the most recent 2017 version. I will do my best to combine them to provide the full context of the plot, but for this discussion, I will mainly focus on the recent version. I'll explain later in the video. Linus pleads with Lucy to let Charlie Brown rejoin their baseball team, likely due to a fallout after a loss. However, Lucy refuses, even threatening to burn Linus' security blanket. You know, it sure would be a shame if something was to happen to that security blanket of yours. I wonder, is it flammable? Surely it must be. Why'd you have to be born anyway? We then see Charlie walking alone and sitting beside the kite-eating tree, contemplating Lucy's hurtful words. It seems like he's lost all hope for himself. So yeah, this strange devilish entity resembling Charlie Brown but with an abnormal number of tentacles appears and chases him away. Later on, Linus calls Charlie to deliver the bad news and oddly reveals Lucy's whereabouts, which happens to be at Schroeder's house. See, she's supposed to be back before the streetlights come on. So what are you going to do now? Hello? Charlie Brown? Hello? Meanwhile at Schroeder's house, we witness Lucy and Schroeder engaging in another one of their flirtatious conversations, although this one feels more strained and uncomfortable. It's pretty evident that Lucy has a crush on Schroeder in the original comics and specials, though she expects him to feel the same way, he mainly focuses on playing his piano. However, in this case, she's ending their potential relationship, realizing that he will never reciprocate her feelings and is instead profoundly engrossed in playing his piano. And well, she leaves him. Permanently. Lucy walks back home alone at night with Charlie Brown stalking her, and well, depending on which version you're watching, he either chops her down with a meat cleaver knife or goes Bay Ruth on her ass. Either way, Charlie has had enough and sent Lucy straight to the gulags. After tucking Sally into bed without feeling any remorse over his actions, he goes to sleep. However, he starts having nightmares in which the same dark entity from the beginning, along with multiple dark clones of Charlie, begin to chase after him. Somehow he manages to escape until… Okay, what the f
but we get a hidden prologue motion comic at the end taking place three weeks earlier. Charlie once again visits Lucy for psychiatric help because somehow she's a true professional of that. He talks about feeling empty and exhausted, and Lucy straightforwardly tells him that he has depression and explains how it feels. But she offers a solution. She provides him with a prescription bottle of isocarboxyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzyzy
to. He's been mocked and insulted many times because he was trying hard at what he did, but his efforts have been in vain. And possibly due to the medication, his depression started to grow worse. Yet Lucy kicking him out of the baseball team was the moment he finally snapped. But still, this seems like a stretch for Charlie to murder Lucy in cold blood. However, in the prequel comic, Lucy gives Charlie the prescription bottle and he reads out all of the side effects, notably a few important ones like emotional instability, sleep disturbance, and especially hallucinations and violent impulses. So in a pretty fucked up way, Charlie triggered his intemperate anger from the side effects and Lucy pretty much signed her death warrant. Charlie Brown is haunted by this dark entity that seems to resemble his depression but is bottled up into some demonic figure. To hopefully quell this demon, he must eliminate the one source of all his pain, Lucy. Yet after he finishes the job, he continues to have nightmares of this monstrosity, which ends with this admittedly corny, hyper-realistic jump scare ripped out of a creepypasta. This gives the I am God vibes of Sonic.exe and I kinda <laughs> like it for that. And the jump scare is more like a final message to Charlie about what he has done and how he has to live with the consequences. And it ends with what I can presume to be the entity consuming Charlie Brown. So yeah, he shouldn't have been taking that medicine that was not prescribed to him and Lucy should not have been a well-trusted therapist or medical expert. I'm just spitballing here, what I'm saying is just speculation. But it's best to hear it straight from the horse's mouth, so again, Tony, wherever you are, I hope we get a chance to hear from you. The story would have continued toward the sequel, It's a Cold World Charlie Brown, with the redhead girl seemingly having a prominent role. Unfortunately, with the lack of updates and considering it's been over seven years, it's doubtful it will ever be created, but time will tell. I admire how much It's a Mad World Charlie Brown stuck to the source material but with a dark tone whiplash. Even if the Flash version was a little over the top with his Beelzebub demon character and someone as mysterious as Damien, I appreciate the amount of lore Tony incorporated into the story. I still prefer the minimalistic approach from the updated version, but both provide a great sense of eeriness and inscrutability. And as insane yet fun as the other Peanuts parody animations are, I always weirdly go back to It's a Mad World. I highly recommend you give them a watch and let me know which version you prefer. Speaking of other Peanuts parody animations, I looked at a pretty insane college animation project by a storyboard artist from The Simpsons. You can click on the video right here. But I am planning on remaking that one without the filler parts. 